Welcome to the Hero Network, where everyone's a hero. I'm your host, Vega, and the world of comics has never collided in a more exciting way than we have this year. I mean, to start, another Frank Miller series is going to be coming to the small screen. Do we still call it the small screen now that it's like standard? Anyway, uh, DC's Watchmen will be available for free and the Animorphs are back. Sounds crazy, but that's not all that we have. We've also got an exclusive interview with creator of Caliber Comics, The Fallen, France Antoine, better known as Itaro Takemoto. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Frank Miller's Cursed is coming to Netflix. That's right, the first trailer for the new Netflix series based on Frank Miller's graphic novel of the same name has arrived and man, it looks amazing. New York Times bestseller, Cursed, is Miller's reimagining of the Arthurian legend, told through the eyes of a young gifted woman who goes by the name Nemo. Through Nemo's journey, she becomes a symbol of courage and rebellion against the Red Paladins and King Uther. Not Arthur, Uther. I mean, just gotta be safe sometimes, you know what I mean? Think that... Anyway, starring Katherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why, another Netflix original, as Nemu, the lead character, it's expected to be a coming of age story with themes focusing around religion, war, and nature. You know, the stuff that we're still having trouble dealing with now. So. Make sure you set your Netflix playlist for July 17th's release of Cursed. Oh, and check out the trailer, of course. In other amazing comic-related news, HBO is going to be offering the Watchmen series completely for free. What exactly does that mean? Well, Watchmen is, without a question, one of HBO's most powerful series in the last... I don't know, three, four, five years. Who knows? Nobody's actually counting. And if you don't believe it's a powerful series, I mean, you should just look at their history. They just won a Peabody Award, which is pretty awesome. The series is based on the original comic, Watchmen, of, you know, the same name, but it's set 30 years later, which starts the story off a little bit around the Tulsa Race Massacre and dives it right into the entire Black Lives Matter movement. So. With everything going on right now in actual real life and current events, it makes a ton of sense that HBO would be excited to make this, this series available for free to all of their audience throughout the entire Juneteenth weekend. That's right, from June 19th until June 21st, you'll be able to watch and stream Watchmen on HBO.com or, if you still have cable for some reason, it'll be available on free on demand. So. Whether you're into it for the political undertones, the amazing action sequences, or you just like comics, this is a prime opportunity to check out one of the best series to hit television in the last couple years. Watchmen, coming to watch you the entire weekend. And in one of the wildest turn of events, and I choose my words very carefully, Animorphs is back. Now. I know, I know, when you heard the name Animorphs, there was one of two reactions. You were either super nostalgic, or you were like, damn, I know Vega's bald, but how old is this guy? And my response to both of those is, one gets a thumbs up, and one gets a mind your business. I'll let you figure out which one. In the meantime, Animorphs, one of the most interesting, unique stories of our time, is set to return in the form of a brand new movie. For those who don't know, Animorphs was a 90s book series uh, developed by author K.A. Applegate. It's kind of crazy all these years I've never researched what K and A stands for. Um, but K.A. Applegate started this series about five teenagers who have the ability to transform into any animal they touch. Like literally any animal they want as long as they touch the animal they can transform into it it was crazy it was amazing and it was probably one of the most read book series of all time i mean 35 million books sold kind of hard to dispute that now 
The film is being produced by Scholastic Entertainment, which was also one of the main distributors of the original book series, alongside Picture Star, um, with Eric Fage, Lucy Katata, Luch and Lucis and Caitlin Freeman set to run the show. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited for it. I can only imagine that if they do this well, it will be an incredible blockbuster of a film. So, here's to seeing Animorphs and how it develops in the near future. All right, well, here's the big surprise. You stuck it out this far. We've already talked about it a little bit. We have had the privilege of bringing in an amazing interview. Now, please let us know in the comment section below what you thought of the interview, if you want us to do more. So this way I can talk to the bosses and be like, hey guys, they definitely want more interviews. Let's talk to more cool people. In the meantime, check out our exclusive interview with Caliber Comics' Franz Antoine, the creator of The Fallen. Enjoy. As promised, guys, you stuck around and I've got an incredible interview for you. I'm getting the privilege to speak to the writer behind the series, The Fallen. He goes by Itaro Takemoto, but his real name is Franz Antoine, and he's here to tell us a little bit more about the series, about himself. How you doing today, Franz? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on here, Vega. Hey, it's, it's a pleasure. We are super excited to have you on here. You know, the Hero Network, everyone's a hero, especially when you're writing about heroes. You know what I mean? So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Oh uh, man, it's uh, it's been a great experience, man. Um, I started several years ago, man. Uh, I'd say 2013. Um, I just had finished wrapping up watching um, Naruto. Like I was binge watching Naruto. Ooh, My friend good forced one. me on there. <laughs> yeah, he kind of forced me to watch it though. I wasn't gonna watch it, man. I'm I'm too old for this. It's a cartoon, this and a third. And then he just locked me in a room one day. I was like, hey, you're gonna watch this. And wow. that was like my intro. <laughs> um, like 2009 was like my intro to to anime for real. Um, and ever since then, I've just been hooked. You know, I've been hooked. And then along the way, I was just thinking like, yo, why can't I do this? Like, I love to write anyway. Why can't I create a world like this? I'm always, you know, fantasizing, thinking about stuff like that. So, you know, that was when it all started, man. It was like an aha moment for me. And uh, I, I love hearing time. stories like that. And I love meeting people like you, like people who can literally just be like, huh, why can't I do that? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> like you break every good. rule in society when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's how I like you. Know, a, little, a little bit of a rebel. A little bit of a rebel. Yeah, that's dope. So so tell me a little bit about um, the creative process, bringing these characters to life. I know uh, you started in 2013 and you released um, your first book in, what was it, a little after 2018. Um, yep. So like that's that's a five year process <laughs> yeah tell us about that so it it when that started for me um it was always just creating one character here and come up with an idea like got inspiration by looking at something came up with another character um and i was just looking for a way to just consolidate i was writing everything down in my notebook and it got messy um there were pages everywhere and um, I started looking for, I'm like, yo, this is going to be a lot harder than I thought um, because I can't organize all of these thoughts for this world that I was creating. Um, and then, you know, I stumbled on an app called Mindly um, I, I, on the app store and it organized everything for me. Like you just plug in the information, the little notes for everything. And it just created like this diagram for me. And as soon as I started doing that, everything just started picking up. Um, so as of right now, I have 73 characters with full backstories, wow. full motivations, um, everything, <laughs> right. Damn. Everything that, you know, I need the powers and everything. Um, and I didn't, the five years was, all right, I have all these characters. I have this world. I have everything that I want. I need a compelling story. You know, um, I had a real good friend of mine tell me something when, when it comes to writing, um, don't ever start anything until you have a conclusion in mind that makes someone say, oh, I get it. Um, and that's what I really took good my advice. time. That's really what good I advice. really took my time. It is, it is, <laughs> I loved it. So as soon as I figured out what that was, I, you know, for spoiler reasons, I can't tell you the ending, of course. Yeah, no, no, I don't want you to either. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> but, um, as soon as I figured out, you know, where I wanted that story to conclude, all the characters started falling into place with that. And then I've just been going ever since then. That's funny because um, I, I write myself and uh, I, I tell my friends all the time, my my spark of inspiration is always just a random scene. 
like it'll be in the middle of the of the story the beginning the end it doesn't matter it's just this one scene and i'm like wow that'd be a really cool scene to see on tv what gets there <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's, that's it's funny it's hilarious because i literally have something that won't show up till like um i'm gonna say 150 uh issues at least um but wow. that was one of my very first scenes that i ever envisioned and um i was listening to a song that's how it started off by listening to a song <laughs> and i just snapped I was like whoa that's that's gonna be my scene right there so yeah so if you were to if you were to describe the series to to people who are let's say like you that they they were introduced to anime comics later on in life and they're just like yo bro i don't i don't have any reason to to get into this how would you sell it <laughs> So with this, how would I sell it? Man, it, it's it's a dynamic box, a lot of stuff going on in it, but the best way to describe it is um, it's a power struggle between man, gods, and the high gods. Um, something that, you know, we can somewhat relate to just by looking at, you know, government and, you know, how we struggle with, the, you know, with ourselves here in the, in the world. So um, this is kind of like what happens when man is suddenly given power to kind of compete with the higher gods. Um, and everyone's fighting for the same world right now. And, um, you know, it's one of those stories where I don't want a main character. There is no one main character. I don't want you knowing, like there's certain sh shows you watch, you just know, all right, he's about to win this fight. There's no way he's gonna die. And if he dies, he'll be resurrected. There's none of that here. You know, you don't know what's going on. So this is more like a, um, there's a lot of mythology, like ancient mythology um, inspiration in there. Um, so if I were to look at it, this would be like a anime version of Game of Thrones with ancient mythology uh, snuck in there. So, oh, that sounds awesome. That's the tagline. <laughs> anime Game of Thrones. That's uh, I'm sold. I didn't even I didn't even like Game of Thrones that much because I'm not a big fan of like the the medieval Western style like knights and stuff. I'm much much bigger on the Eastern side. Uh, which brings me to your pseudonym. How did how did we end up there? <laughs> Itaru, Itaru Takimoto. Um, yeah, so for me, this, uh, I thought about it. I gave it some thought. And I was like, um, you know, I'm someone who realizes that appropriation happens a lot. And um, I'm entering a realm where it's Japanese culture. Um, and I want to give props to it because it inspired me to create this. Um, but I also know, hey, I'm a black man from America. I don't want to come in making it seem like, like if this story um, introduces a lot more people who weren't into anime before, um, I don't want to take credit like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, someone's going back to watch something old like Bleach or something. Oh, that's kind of like The Fallen. No, 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 no. The Fallen is kind of like Bleach. I'm taking it from them. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, it felt, even with how I write it, you know, it's in traditional manga um, format. You know, you got to go from right to left. Right um, to I left. wanted to make sure <laughs> that, you know, everyone understands that, you know, this is Japanese in sense. And the name came about simply by google names i just created <laughs> it was a name generator <laughs> so uh, I know how many so, all right all right this this spoiler i'm gonna accept how many of your characters did you come up with their names that way <laughs> oh, man. um i would say maybe about 15 of them 15 of them was a generator generator but um, generator. there's a lot of them where um i just used um basically something strong about the character what like their characteristics or you know what it is that i want from them and um, use different languages from anywhere in the world. And I just translated certain words. That's super dope. That is super dope. Um, so Thank you. Uh, speaking, speaking a little bit more on the culture, how do you combine the two cultures, right? Like you said, you're a black man, you're living essentially in this, this Japanese world, right? Like as much as we get into anime and manga, that's still a Japanese culture and we're just guests, right? So how did you merge those cultures if you did in the stories? that is something that took a lot of um thought as well um because you know I, I was trying to stay true so um basically how i did it was um each of the fallen gods um within this um they own their their own country they run their own country um mm. and that kind of gave me some some leeway for me to have different um styles of dress different styles of talk like religions mindsets and all that um and with that i made sure that you know certain major aspects of it molded the Japanese culture into it. Um, same way with, uh, I'll have some Greek culture in there. I'm, I'm Haitian, 
of Haitian descent, I had to throw in some Haitian flavor in there. So um, with me, this is just about diversity. This is gonna be a very, very diverse story. Um, there's even Druids. Um, there's uh, a, a tribe wow. of giants. So <laughs> there, there's, it's, it's a lot of diversity um, and it all comes together in a neat package after five years of thinking about it. That's amazing. That is amazing. So after five years of thinking about it, it's now available. Where can people go and purchase the Fallen series and stay connected so, to the Fallen? <clears throat> so as of right now, it's uh, available digitally only. Um, unfortunately, uh, COVID slowed everything down. You know, I just recently signed a contract with uh, Caliber Comics. Um, they were- oh, congratulations. Going to, thank you, I appreciate it. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, we were going heavy with the, um, you know, production of, of the print and um, COVID had to slow that down. So digitally, you can find us on Amazon Kindle. Um, we're available on um, Google Books as well as Comixology, uh, first nice. four issues. And, um, you know, as soon as they open the printing press up, sorry, the printing press is up again, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's okay, um, you're a writer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But as soon as that happens, you know, we'll be um, in Barnes and Noble and several other places that they already have deals with. Wow, that's amazing. That is super exciting. Um, so one last piece, because like for me, it's, it's really exciting to see people like us getting into these worlds, right? Because we don't have a lot of inspiration when it comes to comic books, right? Like how many of them have been drawn by black men, by Spanish men, Haitian men, French, right? Like there's not a lot of that. So how do you feel like this, this comic book has the opportunity to like impact? the way that the entertainment industry looks at diversity as a, as a whole? Um, I believe that this is going to be a huge step in the right direction because um, right now there's a whole lot of, um, I see this a lot, actually. There's a lot of people who are like, all right, you know, if we want to create our own comic books, us as black people, we need to create our own, which I agree. We do need to produce, publish our own. Um, but a lot of times what they do is they create these comic books where, um, there's nothing but black uh, characters in it, which isn't a problem. I'm I completely, I'm good with that. Um, but you're also drawing a line because there's going to be a um, demographic of people who are going to see that book and they won't pick it up because of that reason. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> the goal for me is everyone's represented in this. Um, and the way to make it seem, well, not even seem, the way to make the change is to show that, hey, even though everyone's represented in this, it's not just the white characters that are going to come in and save the day. There's going to be some very important black characters as well as some very important Asian characters. We don't even see Asians um, in a lot of these stories, even though it's coming from Japan. Um, right. So with me, I, I really want to work on diversity and inclusion and the impact that the characters have, um, regardless of race, is what's really going to start making people like, imagine a little white boy for once reading a comic book and his favorite character, you know, Zenku is going to be one of my, He's personally one of my favorites from The Fallen, and he's looking up to a black character for once. That's the way I think we should go about it. Absolutely. I think I think you're 100% right with that. I always say, like, it's one thing to try to build our own, but it's also important to incorporate in what exists, right? Like, that's how we become the norm. So I, I definitely agree with that. Um, but this is Hero Network, and we're going to keep this fun. So last question is going to be a lot more exciting, right? right? Off the top of your head, top five superheroes of all time top five superheroes <laughs> of all time man you didn't get no warning for this or nothing. Okay. okay okay uh do what i'm thinking if i should do this in order i'm not gonna do it in order because i'm, I'm a no particular order because that gets super no hard <laughs> okay all right i just have to start off with my one of my personal favorites Gambit, man. I, I yes. love X Men. Yes. Gambit was my favorite character. <laughs> Smooth, slick. His powers were dope. I, I love Gambit. Um, I don't think you can create this list without speaking on. Even though I'm a Marvel guy, uh, DC did come in, and you know, Batman has to be on that list. Um, There's just such a compelling story, all in all. Um, hoo -hoo -hoo, top five. <laughs> I am going to have to add. <clears throat> I hate the fact that I have two DC characters already. Thinking about <laughs> third. Maybe um, not be I'm a gonna, Marvel guy. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm not a Marvel guy no more. Um, I'm going to have to add um, Wonder Woman, uh, genre breaking, added yes. inclusion, and brought a whole you know, new 
culture. It made it okay for girls to want to read comics and, and watch, you know? Um, da, 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 da. Man, heroes, heroes. I'm going to say it because even though for most of the show he was considered a villain, uh, Itachi. Itachi Uchiha is... Okay, well, okay. Five claws. Yeah, 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 I give um, you that. And at the end, that. didn't know he was a hero. Um, he was just, you know, he went about it a completely different way. So Itachi, for sure. Um... And then it would have to be, would have to go with Wolverine. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, that's, that's my top five right there. Nice. I love it. Well, I don't want to steal the rest of your day from you. So let the people watching know how they can follow you, how they can keep up, how can they can reach out, you know, any, anything that you uh, want to tell them. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Good. Thanks for having me on here. Um, if you guys want to reach out, find me. Um, I'm very open to all types of, of feedback. I love it. Uh, constructive criticism is great for me. Um, I'm on IG on Frenchie 852, um, as well as, you know, just leaving reviews on any of the issues. As I said, Amazon, um, uh, Google Books, as well as Comixology, I read reviews every day, um, and that helps me go a long way. And Well, I hope it continues working. I can't wait to read the 150th issue because I want to know how they started. <laughs> so keep doing it. Keep up the good work. Um, congratulations again on the deal and thank you for coming out Hero Network to just kick it with us for a little bit, man. We appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. All right. That's a wrap. Wow. That was an incredible interview. I mean, if you're not sold on the Fallen series yet, I don't know what it's going to take, but I do recommend hopping on Amazon or your favorite digital platform so you can check out the series for yourself. Now, there were a ton of things that I wanted to talk about this week, like Dragon Ball Super's Vegeta getting a new technique or DC and Warner Bros new multi-year deal with Spotify. But as always, it's a lot to go on and we don't got a lot of time. So thank you for tuning in to the Hero Network where everyone's a hero. Again, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to follow at Hero Network TV. And I'm your host, Vega. You can follow me at What Up Vega. Have a great weekend, because I know I will. I'll be playing The Last of Us too. Peace.